you know, uh, Jimmy Carter, when he got elected, had in his mind that he wanted to bring peace to the Middle East, which is, of course, a crazy dream. And uh, nobody in his administration encouraged it. But he began uh, auditing, you know, Middle East leaders as they came in, trying to sound them out. And he was really disappointed until he met Anwar Sadat and just fell in love. Uh, he actually said he loved Anwar Sadat many times, and it's not the normal language of diplomacy. And, uh, but he was very discouraged about how it was going. Finally, his wife, they were at Camp David, and she said, why not bring them here and get them away from the press? And you know, they thought they'd be three or four days and uh, you know, give it a chance. And so that's where the whole peace process was actually born. What was his uh, view of Menachem Begin? Well, Menachem Begin was an obstinate individual and very difficult for Carter to deal with. But Carter came to believe that uh, he had to make the greatest sacrifice at Camp David. Menachem Begin's parents were both killed in the Holocaust. And he felt that he had the whole burden of Jewish history on his shoulders. And the, his goal was to expand the zone of safety for Jewish people. And constantly enlarging the size of Israel was his political agenda. So for him to actually surrender Sinai, the peninsula that Israel had conquered in 1967, was to forfeit this huge strip of land that separated Israel from the invading Egyptian armies. Uh, so to trust his enemy was really, really hard for him to do. Did Menachem Begin and Anwar Sadat develop a personal relationship at all? Somewhat, yeah. I mean, they were historic figures. They made history together, but they didn't you know, personally like each other very much. Um, it wasn't the kind of relationship that, that Carter had with Sadat. Uh, but on the other hand, they respected each other. They, and Begin, made, you know, when Sadat was assassinated, largely because he signed that Camp David agreement, Begin made a big show of actually going to his funeral and at a time when not very many world leaders did. What exactly was negotiated during those 13 days? Well, there are two parts to it. One is peace between Egypt and Israel. And um, Egypt is the only Arab country that really posed a threat to Israel's existence. And this was, you know, as I said, very difficult for Begin to surrender all this conquered territory, but, and to trust uh, his historic enemy. There was another part of the, the agreement, which was peace between Israel and the Palestinians. And that part of it has never actually been implemented. It's a roadmap to what would be envisioned as a, a worthy and just peace. And every since, ever since uh, the Camp David Accords were signed, the subsequent attempts have been to try to realize the unfulfilled promise of the Camp David Accords. Was there any thought given to bringing the Palestinians directly into this summit? No, and that was, you know, it was a big problem. There were no Palestinians present. But at the time, you know, the only representative was Yasser Arafat, and head of PLO, and you know, declared a terrorist by the United States. It was very difficult for Carter to actually uh, negotiate with them. You remember that his UN ambassador, Andy Young, met with uh, the Palestinians at one point, and they got tremendously criticized just for saying hello. 